Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Muhammad al-Sharif and welcome to our new series called Raise Your Du'as. I was once walking through a store looking at t-shirts and different statements that were being said on these t-shirts and one t-shirt really caught my eye. It had a trailer on it and the slogan on the t-shirt said, aim low. And at the bottom it said, that way you'll never be disappointed. However, you'll see lots of people when it comes to their dua, they actually do aim low so that they won't get disappointed. And let me give you some examples of that. If somebody wants to get married, but they feel really depressed, like, I'm never going to get married. So even in their dua, sometimes they really aim low. Oh Allah, give me anybody. Or you might have, for example, somebody else, they've been making du'a for a long time for children, and it may be 10 years that have passed by, and then when you see their du'a, they may be lowering their standards when it comes to their du'a. This entire series is going to do the opposite of that. I would tell you, don't lower your standards, but in fact, raise your du'a. And if you follow with me in this step one video, and then we have another video, step two, and a third video, step three, inshallah ta'ala, my promise to you is that you are going to find the foundation to raise your du'as. Now, before we jump into all of that, I just want to give a quick introduction about myself. My name is Muhammad al-Sharif. I was born and raised in Canada, originally from Egypt, memorized Quran when I was a little kid, graduated from Medina University, went for Hajj for like um, the past 20 years. I helped develop a Hajj application for the iPhone and Android. Uh, I founded a Maghrib Institute. I also do personal development courses with Discover You. So whether you're coming from another mailing list somebody sent you here or on our Facebook page where we have like 100,000 people there, wherever you came from, I want you to understand that this video is between me and you. It's not an audience that I'm speaking to, it's just between me and you. And whenever I send an email out to other people, I always put the signature with best wishes to see you succeed at the highest level. And wallahi, I mean it, that's my motto. If I see you succeed, if you come back and say, Muhammad, you know what? My life changed, I watched these videos, I benefited so much, wallah, that makes my day. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from you and accept from me, inshallah ta'ala. So let's get into this. So this is step number one, video one, your beliefs regarding dua. What do you believe about dua? Do you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts du'as? Do you believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your du'a? When do you think this du'a is going to be accepted? Is it going to be immediately? Is it going to be like in the hereafter? And now here's a really critical question. If you really do believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers all the du'as, then why aren't you making more du'as? When I was a little kid about 25 years ago, Ramadan was coming along and you know, every year I tell people this story because it changed my life. I was 11 years old and I was about to start memorizing Quran after Ramadan. I said to myself, you know, just little Muhammad al-Sharif, 11 years old, I said, hey, if I make the same dua every day in the last 10 nights, every day, then it's guaranteed that my dua will hit one of the nights of Laylatul Qadr. And if that's the case, that means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed my dua is going to be answered. Now remember, I was just 11 years old, made this dua, I said, Ya Allah, let me memorize the Quran in two years or less. But I raised my hands up. With certainty, I made this dua, and two years later, I had the Quran memorized. So not only did I memorize the Quran, but I was taught at a young age that Allah answers the dua. Now many years passed after that, and I found myself every month of Ramadan, I would tell people about, hey, when I was younger, when I was younger, when I was younger. And then I said to myself, wait a second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still answers dua. And so if I did this when I was young, what's stopping me from doing this when I'm 20 years old, or when I'm 30 years old, or 22 or 20? What's stopping me from always making dua like that? So for about the last 10 years, before Ramadan would come in, I would do a little retreat for myself, go somewhere special and inspirational, and start thinking to myself, what amazing du'as do I want to make? 
I would compile this list together of my dream du'as and then I would hit Ramadan and throughout the entire month of Ramadan or especially in the last nights of Ramadan, I would make these du'as every single day when I'm breaking iftar and taraweeh and sajda, I keep making these du'as and year after year after year, I found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was answering all my du'as. So let's get started first and foremost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ And if my servant asks you regarding me, verily I am close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I answer the call of the one who calls upon me. Now this ayah straightforward tells you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua. You don't need anything else beyond this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already promised that he would answer the dua. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it comes to Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ That whoever fasts in Ramadan with iman, with belief and ihtisab, and that's the desire to have the reward, all his past sins will be forgiven. There's something critical about this. The Prophet ﷺ basically gave two conditions. That when the person fasts, they have belief in the reward and they're hoping for the reward. So first and foremost, in order to raise your dua, you need to have these two things. You need to have belief that your dua will be answered. And the second thing is, you have to, in a burning desire way, desire for that du'a to be answered. Now you might assume that, you know, yeah, I believe the du'as are answered. But let me give you an example of somebody who came to one of my classes on du'a, one of these retreats. And before he came, he was saying to me that, Muhammad, isn't it a little irresponsible for you to be going around telling people that Allah is going to answer their du'as? I know it sounds really strange, right? But the background that he's coming from is the cultural conditioning of everybody telling each other that, you know, make du'a and your du'a is not going to be answered, it'll be in the hereafter, right? Make du'a, your du'a is not going to be, it'll be in the hereafter. So that people kind of like lose hope. And he was actually in a state of, you know, he's lost hope in his du'a. He just figured all his du'as are going to be answered in the hereafter because nothing's really changing in his life. So I said to him in response that I have no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dawah. Now at first he was a little skeptical, you know, like what are you talking about? But when he went through the whole program with me, came to the end, and in front of the whole class at the end of the seminar, he was in tears and then he said, now I understand Muhammad what you meant about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answering the dua. See the problem is this, people think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't answer their duas in this life because they don't know Allah azza wa jal in the way befitting of his majesty and his generosity subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you start looking at the Quran, you start looking at the sunnah and what it says about the dua, then you will understand. And so the take action point that I want to give you here is that go to books of, that speak about the virtues of dua, whether they're talking about from the Quran, from the Sunnah, read about it and really absorb that and drink it in your belief in dua and that Allah Azza wa Jal accepts the dua of the one who calls upon him. The second issue with regards to laying this foundation of belief in dua is understanding that dua is the essence of worship. There is a hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu said, "Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah." That du'a is worshiping Allah azza wa jalla. So if you look at salah, we're encouraged, you know, when we're in sajda to make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa taala. When you look at fasting, it's all about making du'a. When you look at hajj from the beginning to the end, from the traveling to going to Arafah, everything is related to du'a. As you go back and forth through the different worship, different ways of worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal, you realize that everything goes back to making du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what is the situation then of somebody who hasn't prepared anything to make du'a for, or they don't know what to make du'a for, they're just going through these routine um, rituals, and they're not raising their hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not asking for anything. 
Now to give you an example of this, I want you to recall back a time when you had an exam the next day, right? Maybe you're in high school, secondary school, or university, or at some point in your life, you had an exam the next day, and in your dua, you were asking Allah for a good mark, right? I found in my own experience, and I'm sure you've been there, you were probably crying in your prayer, right? You were in sajda and you took extra long and you really felt the prayer and you could feel the Quranic recitation because you had something to ask Allah for. You had something to ask Allah Azza wa for. Now the exam passed, inshallah ta'ala, you got a good mark or whatever it was. But let me ask you this, what about your life now? Do you also have things like an exam the next day that you can make dua for with such passion? And if you did have something that you were that passionate about, what would be the situation of your salah, right? Every single day, you were that passionate, you got into sajda, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. So I have this theory that when people complain that they don't feel their prayer or they're not feeling, you know, concentration in prayer, my theory is that they don't have anything to make du'a for. Or my theory is that they're not making du'a for things that are special to them in their life. Because when that's the case, when you're not making du'a and you're just going through the prayers, then you're not calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which brings us back to the point that du'a is the essence of worship. Now the final point with regards to your belief in du'a and raising your standards, raising your du'a, is understanding that anything that you make du'a for is easy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To illustrate what I'm talking about in that everything is easy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I used to teach in an Islamic school and this was grade one, the kids were like six years old. A kid came up to me and he was complaining about another student in the class who had taken one of his crayons and didn't give it back. Now I looked at this kid who was complaining and he had like 50,000 crayons and he was worried about, you know, another kid took one of his crayons. So I'm like, dude, you have 50,000 crayons and he only took one. So I was about to begin talking with him about this, you know, 50,000 crayon issue and then he started crying and he's like, teacher, I want my crayon back. Right. So he started bawling. I was like, you know, when people cry, for some reason, I start laughing. I don't know why. So a little giggle in my, in, um, you know, under my throat. And then I said to myself, dude, it's only a crayon that you're asking for. It's just a crayon. But he's six years old. But then I thought about it later. And if you think about it yourself, the things that you're asking Allah Azza wa for, is it really that complicated for Allah Azza wa to answer those dots? If you really look at what you're asking for, oh Allah, give me a house, a car, whatever it is, it's just a crayon. No matter what you're making dua for, inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah has the power over everything and can do anything. That what you're making dua for is something very easy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So before you go around saying, how will Allah answer my duas, just calm down. What you're asking for is nothing more than a crayon. And it's easy in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that brings us to the end of step number one in raising your du'as. We were talking about your beliefs regarding du'as. And in the second video, our step number two, we're going to be talking about the wording, how you word your du'as. And in the third video, step number three, we're going to talk about how to systematically take action in making du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and opening yourself up to have those du'as answered. Now, this is just a video, but I'd love to interact with you. So in the comments below, I would love it if you shared a story when you knew Allah Azza wa answered your dua. We've done this in the past, and it's such a beautiful conversation of times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered your dua. And love to interact with you, inshallah ta'ala. And hopefully you can encourage other people to share with us in this beautiful series of raising your dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put immense barakah in our video series and may it go far and wide. And I ask you inshallah ta'ala to make the intention now to view the entire series. You know, say it, no way to, I make the intention to view all of the Muhammad al-Sharif series on raising your dua for the sake of Allah, inshallah. And with that, I'll meet you in the comments below. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.